Hello, hello. Here we are. Our way training plotter. This is a screen you'll see when you start it up, I think. It's most easily controlled with the mouse. Left, right button and roll bar. Left button held moves the chart around the screen. Roll bar zooms you in and out. Interesting, if you zoom it right out, you'll see where they place the chart in relation to the rest of the world. They put it somewhere in the middle of the Bay of Biscay. I guess no one's going to run into it there. Zooming in, you can see the further we zoom in, the more detail we get. Let's get to a bit of coastline. It's quite a nicely rendered chart. Depths aren't shown, that's what this anchor button is for. So if you click on anchoring, you get the soundings on or off, that's all that does. Um, for detail on any of the features, as it's a vector chart, you can hover over the feature. If it's got a light, it will show you the light characteristic. For more information, right click on the same point and from the menu choose information and you get extra blah 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 blah. All right, close that. And zoom out a little. Let's uh, show some of the drawing features now. You can use this to do EPs, course to steers, draw lines, measure distances. What it doesn't do is show your boat's position as if it had a GPS feed, but we can still do some plotting on it. So almost everything as far as drawing is concerned is operated by the right button. So if we were to put a position on the chart in Tristan Bay, right click in the position you want to put the point, choose point, and there it is, a little pin drop. I'm going to make this a fix. I'm going to give it the time of the fix and the log at that time. Let's see where 12.5 miles. I can click back on the point to change anything about it. Sorry, right click back on the point. I could enter here a more specific position as a Latin long. So if you're trying to find a Latin long, that's the way to do it. Drop a point anywhere, right click in and define the position in that box. I can right click in and change the symbol, which I want to do. I don't want to pin, I want to fix. That's it. So we have our fix at 12.30. To do an EP from here, just as you would on paper, you want to draw the water track from that position. So we right click at the start and we choose to draw a new line and it's going to be a water track. So here the water track is now controlled by my pointer. Let's say we'd steered 070 for five miles. So I'm just going to keep moving this till I get it five long and sweeping it down to 070. Five, a bit difficult to, oh, I've done it. Bosh, so there's my, dead reckon position at the end of the line and it's annotated the track with my heading if you like and the distance run through the water. For an EP we need to add the tide at the end so from the end or dead reckon position we right click again and we're going to do a new line this time it's going to be the tidal vector which they call the tidal drift line and again I can just move the pointer until I have the tide that I've calculated, let's say it was 157 at 1.3. Or whatever, let's just say it's that. Click to drop it, and there's the tidal vector. So kind of that's the P. You want to make nice a nice symbol at the end, right click to put a new point. I guess that point should have the new log and time. So let's say it was a one hour journey 1330 DST and the log will have increased from 12.5 by 5 to 17.5 so, and rather than have a pin right click again so I can change let's try that again right click on the pin try once more right click on the pin yeah to change the symbol to an EP If you want information about the track between the start and the finish or the ground track, 
we can draw that right click from the initial position place a new line which will be a ground track line and join it to the EP you can see it's annotated here the the direction of that line so that's the cog course over ground 084 and the distance over the ground which for a one hour plot will be ground speed 5.68 miles equivalent to 5.68 knots so that's the EP if you want to change any of the lines or delete them you can click on and press the delete button let's get rid of the ground track or you can treat them or manipulate them from here in this top menu button we can look at the overlays which these are all these lines we've drawn are i guess they're called overlays and you can see them all here as we select each one they also become selected on the chart so i'm going to delete all of those and quickly do a course to steer so using the same the same drawing instruments if you like we'll do a course to steer to the intersect this leading line into Slade Island so let's start again at some sort of random place right click here there's the point make it a fix again so a little bit later and give it the fix symbol all right so for a course to steer to the intersect with this um, leading line we're going to start with the ground track right click we want a new line ground track line so i'm going to and through the end of the line extending it there next tide that goes on here right click new line this time it's the tidal vector we'll put a tide on again it'd be whatever you calculate i'm just doing a random tide here 154 at one point 1.8 knots and from the end of the tide we've got to strike off our predicted boat speed so to do this right click new line this time a line with an arc this allows you to, oops, no, I've just changed the type. What I did there was I changed the um, line type. Still want that as my tidal vector, sorry. I want to generate a new line from the end of the tidal vector. So it's a new line, and this time it's a line with arc. So here you can see I've got this arc, which makes it easy to, to find the intersect of my predicted boat speed with the ground track. So let's say we're going to do uh, five, uh, five, five knots. So I'm looking for where the line hits the ground track. It's only just after the intersect, but I've got to make sure it says five knots and get the intersect with the ground track. Click that there. And once I've got it, I can convert that line, right click on it, I can convert that to what it probably should be as the water track or course to steer. I know this 087 from the fix should get you there if you're going at five knots. You see the effect from this quite clearly if, if you were to do the journey more slowly. Let's do it at four knots. So we do a new line with an arc this time. Well, let's see where the intersect is at four knots. 3.839 four knots. All right, that's it. We'll convert that to a course to steer as well. So I've right clicked, line type, water track, 083. Tides having more effect at a lower speed, you have to steer into it more. All right. Um, that's it for this. I guess I could just quickly show you how, if you don't want to view the vector chart, you can look at the raster equivalent.
again top menu here so that's the chart same sort of area is that useful <laughs> all right next one part two Lou is uh, how you can uh, load the NME files and MEA files so you can see how a boat might look as it's plotted on on the chart. All right, bye.